What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Career Mode. This is episode number 115 and we're starting today's episode off by seeing that Brentford won the Super Cup. Our former two Career Mode teams meeting in the Super Cup after we won the Champions League with Milan and Brentford won the Europa League and Brentford, that's the sign of a great manager when he leaves a team better off than when he found them and they continue to get better. Brentford, Super Cup winners, I love it. But as I show you the squad there, and as we know, over 230 million in the transfer budget remaining. I teased you in the last episode after bringing in 10 new players total for the transfer window so far. We've already signed two players that could be considered Galacticos. In German, Ladesma, Sergio Ramos' is regen, and also Pedro Porro as well. But who's the guy I knew? was going to lead this line at Real Madrid and become the next certified superstar Galactico. Wow. With his former two teams meeting in the Super Cup. I think you all knew he was going to be Roberto Gutierrez. Yes, after leaving Brentford to join Milan, of course we were going to take him with him to the San Siro. He elevated his game when he touched down in Italy, won the Serie A goal-scoring record. He now holds it with 37 in a season. He won three golden boots in his first year, the Coppa Italia, the, uh, the Serie A, and also the Europa League as well. Last year, won his second in Serie A golden boot and he's become the best striker in the world at 25 years old and 93 rated for 210 million pounds welcome to the Bernabeu on a five-year 310,000 pound a week contract the goal machine Roberto Gutierrez absolutely buzzing to pull it off. And you know, we saw the budget at the start of the season. I was thinking, okay, I'm going to have to move a few pieces around here because obviously we had a squad of just 21 men at the start of the season. I needed to fill out the squad. And those Spanish free agents have really helped us, the young talent we've got for the future. But I still need to sell a couple of players. I didn't actually plan on selling Morgan Jackson to Wolves. I was going to use him. He was a bit of a villain with a villain of ours um, when, we, joined, when we, we were managing Brentford when he was at Old Trafford but after we sold him I knew that Sam Greenwood as good as a young talent as he is I feel as though I could do with someone better leading my line Ferran Torres can play through the middle and up top as well but to me I knew if I was going to buy a striker there could only ever be one option and it is the goal machine the Uruguayan joins here at the Bernabeu again a huge deal a huge transfer of 210 million pounds but again in the prime of his career right now at 25 years old 93 overall the best striker in world football. Might be a little bit biased, but I stand by it. Roberto Gutierrez, the next Galactico, and I'm buzzing. So, following that deal there and the season ticket money go through, we only had around 40, I say only, we had around 47 million pounds remaining. So, I decided not to make any more transfers for the start of this season. But the one thing I did do was change things internally. I changed from my formation for a 4 3 3 false 9. I don't want to play with a false nine, and Gutierrez is not a false nine. That guy would be wasted as a false nine. He's an out-and-out -out poacher goal scorer. So we changed to a 4-2-3-1 like we used with AC Milan. And as a five-star team, the last thing I decided to do was make a change with the captain's armband. We didn't have a captain here at Real Madrid. Valverde had taken it by default. So I said, Roberto, you led AC Milan to a treble in two years. I'm trusting you as my leader on the pitch. Expensive signing at 210 mil, but again, 93 overall, best striker in the world, and now captain and leader of the new Real Madrid team. I love it. I really, really do. So heading into the first game of this season, my first game as Real Madrid manager, you have no idea how excited I was for this man because I've wanted to manage Real Madrid for all the years I've been on YouTube and I've never had the chance, can you believe it? Over a decade of being on YouTube and I've never had the chance to manage Real Madrid, a club that I've always wanted to manage. And this is going to be my first game with them as well. At the burn about Deportivo Alaves and I was thinking right match day one first game of the season being asked to win La Liga this season after a horrendous season domestically last year third place in La Liga the pressure's on from match day one and Florentino Perez will be watching closely so at half time as we were still tied at 0-0 Roberto had had our two chances but the uh, pundits there suggesting it had a slow start to his Real Madrid career tied at 0-0 and still deadlocked into the break I was thinking 
We cannot afford a goalless draw on the opening day. Are you kidding me? With all the offensive pieces and star power we've got, no. It would be great to get a clean sheet with our new back line, but come on now. We need goals. We need a win. With 17 minutes to go, we were still deadlocked. Couldn't find the breakthrough until we did, but it was a Gutierrez. It was Sergio Ramos' regen first game at Real Madrid and talk about a fairy tale debut. And if it wasn't clear it was Ramos' regen before, this goal makes it pretty obvious. Leaping like a salmon as Ramos would often do for Real Madrid. Scored so many goals with his head from set pieces and that's his first on his debut. How fitting is that as Ramos' regen, German Ledesma, Gives us the breakthrough, finally. And then after that, the pressure was off. I knew we closed out the game where we'd been in full control. And with seven minutes to go, we're getting his first goal in Real Madrid colours. It was a tap-in. He's a tap-in merchant. That's what the people would be saying on football Twitter. But even so, for 210 mil... I'm expecting a lot more goals than just one this season. But finally, he's off the mark. Took him 84 minutes and his fourth attempt, I believe, to get it. But Gutierrez has got his first goal in Real Madrid colours. But again, in this game, did not play my best football. And it might take a little bit of time to gel with this Real Madrid side. Because again, we're using a completely new set of players. Yes, tactically, now we're set up as the 4-2-3-1 that we had with Milan. But there was an adjustment period when we joined AC Milan at the San Siro. And if you remember in our first season, we had a pretty slow start. I wouldn't be surprised, despite how good this team is, if we have another slow beginning to life with our new team. So I thought what I could do with is another former player that I know how to operate well with. And I thought we could do have a new backup centre half. And whilst this guy's a whole new mid, he did spend some time playing centre back at AC Milan. And with two bids for in for him, I thought I'm not going to let him go elsewhere. I'm going to bring him in. 27.5 mil was the bid we negotiated with our former team, AC Milan. Five year, 75 grand a week contract. And again, this guy didn't get that much game time. Like Castaneda, though, whenever he did play, he played really well. And Alessandro Menezes, not a Spaniard but a Brazilian, is coming to the Bernabeu. And this guy just reminds me so much of Casemiro. He's a high energy player with 90 stamina, 90 strength, medium high work rate, 6 foot 1, defensively absolutely brilliant. And as a holding mid, as a ball winning midfielder, or as a centre half, he could do either role. And to me, with only three centre backs here, that's what I'm going to do. Like when we signed Castaneda to Milan and we only had a couple of centre halves when we brought him in, I changed him from holding mid to centre back. That proved to be a brilliant transition for him. I'm I'm going to do the same with Alessandro. He spent time playing centre half with us at Milan. Would also also sort of spent about probably 50% of the time playing there and 50% playing holding mid as well. But in this Real Madrid team, whilst you might get a game or two at holding mid, to me, I think with a CB, let's just say lack of numbers at CB we've got, I think he'll do really well as our third choice centre half. It'll only take him two weeks to get the position change completed and to get another four Milan player back with me to help me adjust the life here at the Bernabeu is going to be really useful. This is our Casemiro, I believe. Still, following that, our second game of the season, Rayo Vallecano, our Madrid rivals. So as we know, this season in La Liga, can we give them some props? They are doing so well. I believe right now, at the time recording this commentary, they're in a Champions League spot. They're having a brilliant, brilliant season. And they're a great team to do a career mode with as well. I actually did a brief career mode with them a few years ago. But they've got a real stadium in the game. And it's absolutely unique. It's... It's one of the most unique stadiums you'll see in FIFA career mode. It really is brilliant. It's it's such a great ground. Aesthetically, it looks really, really pleasing. The stands are really close to the pitch, which I always think makes the grounds more atmospheric. And the uh, the background of the in-game stadium looks really cool as well. Madrid shot is in the background. Um, I'm a bit of a nerd, I know. But it's a great stadium and a great team to use for a career mode as well. You know, you've got Real Madrid as a Madrid rival. You've got Barcelona and obviously Atletico, another Madrid rival to battle with as well uh, for Spanish dominance and some great kits to Two. Great team to use for a crew. But however, in this game, they've put up a heck of a fight. We won the game by a goal to nil. Former Barcelona won the kid. Ansu Fati gave us the only goal of the game. However, I'll be honest here, this was tough. We had to grind this result out here. And just like on the opening day against Deportivo Alaves, 
not my best performance. We scrape for a 1-0 victory. It's back-to-back -back clean sheets and back-to-back -back wins. However, a tough start for Real Madrid, despite the two wins from two, not playing my best football just yet. And I will need to get a little bit better if we are to be a dominant force in the league and in Europe this year as well. But that will end today's episode of CM, guys. Massive thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. If you enjoyed it, please a like. Most of you all have a fantastic day. And I'll see you for the next episode featuring Transfer Deadline Day. And it's a mad one as well. Do not miss it very soon.